Good evening everyone and welcome back. So tonight I am going to be describing the synthesis of this compound, butyl acetate. Um, I made this using butanol, um, acetic acid, and sulfuric acid as a catalyst. I've drawn out the mechanism, let's take a look at how it works. So we've got acetic acid, which is your two carbon carbolic acetic acid, and butanol, uh, n-butanol is in one butanol, which is a four carbon um, alcohol. And this has a hydroxide group. Um, so when you bring these two chemicals in contact and then supply a catalyst like sulfuric acid, you can form a water molecule between this hydrogen and this oxygen and hydrogen. It will make H2O, which is a good leaving group. This is called the Fischer esterification. And this is actually an equilibrium reaction. So the equilibrium is usually favored toward the product side when there is something that can draw water away from the reaction like sulfuric acid because it has a very high affinity for water. But when there's not something there that will do that, this will actually go back and forth between the two states and will break down into the reactants and also form the product in you know, equal measure. So when we add the catalyst, what we're doing is we're pushing it towards the product side. So let's get into the actual reaction. So starting off, we have butanol. I got this um, from a friend of mine. And we're gonna measure out 20 grams. Now, uh, my scale stopped working properly during this, so you'll notice that the, uh, the numbers after the decimal point are illegible now. I actually ordered a new scale and got it during this whole thing. Um, now we have acetic acid, glacial acetic acid. So I measure about 20 grams of this out, it's 19 and some change. Now, I should say that the ratio between the carboxylic acid and the alcohol is what limits the reaction here. If you have too much alcohol, it'll take up all the acid and form as much ester until it runs out of acid. Um, and if you have um, too much acid, it will use up all the alcohol until it runs out of alcohol. So here's the catalyst. This is sulfuric acid. And actually, while I was measuring this out, I, I made a mistake. I ended up measuring out like 30 grams of this stuff, and I don't know why I did that. Once I realized what I had done, I was just like, you know what? Uh, let's see what happens if I do this. Uh, so there's two attempts in this video. The first one shows using entirely too much catalyst. Um, and, you know, it's, it's kind of an exercise in, in seeing th things through to the end. So, uh, I started off with the butanol, adding that to the flask. And then I add the acetic acid. And here's the real yellow moment where we're just chucking in like entirely too much sulfuric acid. Camera didn't focus right here. So we're adding more of the acid. I was going slow because I thought maybe it would generate some heat. Now we got it all in. Put the stopper in. And now we're refluxing. You can see the vapor is coming up towards the condenser. No matter how many times I see this, it still never gets old. 
Okay, so this saps the reaction. We're taking apart the apparatus and putting the reaction mix in a separatory funnel. And because we're really good at chemistry, we're also going to put the stir bar in there. There it is. Now we'll wash out the flask with a little bit of water to get all of our products into the separatory funnel. And fish out our uh, stir by. Now I add some water, which will dissolve the excess alcohol and acids after the reaction. It'll also allow the ester to float up to the top so I can separate it off. Now we take out the funnel and shake the ambiguous brown liquid. Remembering to vent because pressure can build up inside of there. Shake, 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 shake. And here we see the ester floating on top of the horribly dark reaction contents. Everything has taken on a deep color and I kind of hate it at this point. But I keep pressing on because I know that there's something in there to get. And at this point, I'm just curious as to see how badly this affected the yield. Now we rinse with some more water and hopefully take out more unreacted acids, alcohols, and the byproduct coloring that we're seeing in it. The water layer is starting to get a little bit clearer. I did start to run into solubility issues though because the, um, the first wash has a lot of sulfuric acid and acetic acid and alcohol in it, which lowers the solubility of the ester. Um, so it tends to separate more easily. The subsequent washes, because they're more dilute, uh, will start to dissolve more of the ester. Um, I found it helpful to add a little bit of brine. So this is like a saturated salt solution. Uh, it just messes up the solubility, basically. It makes the ester not able to s dissolve into the aqueous solution and forces it up into a layer on the top. You shake it, uh, mix everything out around real good so that, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it can do its job. Also important to note that I'm not really worried about um, emulsions here because uh, this, this reaction mix just probably won't form an emulsion. It's not one of those tricky substances. And that's just something you get from experience, I think. So we see the layers separating and then I'm drawing off the aqueous solution on the bottom. And now I'm adding some potassium carbonate to neutralize any leftover acid residue in the product. I left some of the brine solution in there to keep the solubility of the ester low. Now we give it a good shake and remember carefully to vent this thing because especially at this point, it is really susceptible to building up pressure. Now your uh, acids are going to be reacting with your carbonate that you've added and producing carbon dioxide, which will build up pressure inside the vessel. Now we're waiting for layers to separate and because solubility has become a problem again, I add more brine got to keep what meager yield we can in the upper layer. I think you can already kind of see that it's working in that. Shake, shake, shake. 
Plus shaking with this kind of stuff. Okay, layers separating. I think you could see me add a little bit more brine there. Now we're finally getting a good separation, so I draw off the aqueous layer. Now I've got my product in a little Erlenmeyer flask and I tried adding some activated carbon to see if I can get rid of that terrible color, uh, but spoiler alert, it didn't work. Um, if it removed any color, it was so little that it was not really noticeable. So after this, uh, I just moved on to distillation. So I poured this into a flask. Didn't even mind that the carbon got in there because it would just distill off of the carbon. And then I also put some magnesium sulfate in there because I figured at this point I was dealing with such a small volume of product that if I tried to put the magnesium sulfate in something in the reaction mix and then like, uh, you know, filtered it off, I would just get so many mechanical losses. So this, this way I figured the magnesium sulfate would trap some of the water and it would distill off, you know, reasonably dry. So we attach the condenser, start the stirring, and start the heating. Distillation commences shortly after. That's a reasonably low boiling point. And I got a lot more than I thought I would from this, honestly. Looks pretty good too. So I'm tearing the scale out with a empty vial and we're gonna see what the yield was. Fucking terrible. And what's worse is that shortly after this, um, I was walking over to the other bench and I had my little vial and I'm trying to put a label on it. I'm like, oh, this is my little beautiful last day, whatever, and I dropped it. Dropped it right into the dirty glassware container and busted a hole in the very same separatory funnel I was just using. It was great, let me tell you. Okay, here's attempt number two. Starting off, we've got glacial acetic acid. I'm gonna measure out 20 grams of this and spill it on the brand new scale too. that measurement though. Now we're gonna measure out the butyl alcohol uh, and there's gonna be 30 grams of this. Gonna add the butanol to the flask. followed by the acetic acid. And now we're gonna measure out about six milliliters of sulfuric acid. And at, you know, I think it's like 1.8 grams per um, milliliter. Sulfuric acid is, I think, heavier than water. Um, that ends up probably being like 12 grams, so it's like less than half of what we added the first go around. Um, which as you can see is just going to be objectively better in, in general. Better yield, better workup, no color. Anyway, uh, we know that now. Somebody probably already knew that. But it was fun to do anyway.
okay, now we're gonna reflex this thing, just like before, uh, you know, and the obligatory shot of the vapor front making it up towards the condenser. All right, post reaction, big reveal. Look at, look at, look at. Uh, uh, ah, look at that shit, it's so clear. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna get this into a separatory funnel. And we're gonna proceed essentially the same as before. Look at that color. So much better. I should note that, um, the reason that I wanted to make this in the first place is that esters smell good. And this stuff kind of reminds me of bubble gum. Uh, it's kind of like a banana. It's got a weird, like, uh, I guess strawberry almost kind of smell behind it too. And it also smells like chemicals like nail polish remover. So, uh, yeah, there's that. But, uh, I mean, it was fun. So we're washing with uh, brine this time, starting with brine, because I learned my lesson in that the solubility thing is actually kind of an issue here. Look at that separation. Oh, yeah. All right, so now we're gonna draw off the aqueous layer. Now we're going to add more brine and repeat the rinse again. Shake it like hell, venting every now and then. And then we draw off the aqueous layer again, serendipitously removing that hair that managed to make its way in there. I have no idea where that may have come from. More salt water. This time, sodium carbonate. So it's like the step before, except I made a 50-50 brine and sodium carbonate solution. As you can see me pouring the two in there. Um, to neutralize and also keep the solubility low. Now we draw off the aqueous layer one last time. A little bit more brine to wash out the uh, carbonate. Also this step right here, if you just have really saturated brine at the end, will draw out some water, which kind of helps. Obligatory picture for the dudes on the discords. And I now draw this off into an Erlenmeyer, forgetting to remove the stopper. Looks pretty good. 
Now we're gonna add some magnesium sulfate to it again to draw the water out of it some more. Get it nice and dry. I let this sit for about an hour or so. I swirled it around. And then we uh, set up for distillation again. I don't mind if this magnesium sulfate gets in the flask, it's not going to hurt anything. It'll just distill right off of there. I can then connect the condenser. Turn on the heat. And we reflex. I'm sorry. We don't reflex, we distill. Here we go. Ah, look at that vapor front going up over the, to the condenser. And we're starting to get some distillate. The distillation picks up, gets pretty fast, and eventually dies off. And we're empty with, left with a mostly empty flask. And our product on the uh, receiver side. I always tilt my condenser up a little bit right here just to get those last couple of drops that get caught in the joints and stuff. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just, just kind of rocking it forward so that everything just kind of rolls down over that. You can see like five or six drops. That might, I'm almost a milliliter maybe. All right, now we're gonna get this into a bottle and find out what its mass is. And look at this. I think that speaks for itself. Um, we've got a yield here that's, what, like eight times more than the, the first one? Yeah, it's so eight point something, cause you know, three and some grams, three point whatever. Anyway, um, so thank you for watching the video. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, and if uh, you have any other things that you would like to see on this channel, please feel free to comment them below, like and subscribe, maybe share the video if you wanna show it to one of your buddies. Uh, alrighty, thank you.